we can do about this, Bob, and, and today it's a technical episode, right? Yeah, yeah. The stuff we're going to talk about is definitely technical. So given that, like, what, is, what do people need to do that are listening to get the most out of the content today? If you haven't signed up for the Win, Make, Give Wealth Series, do yourself a favor. Go to winmakegive.com sign up for the wealth series it will give you access for free no credit cards no upsells no advertising it will give you access to the workbooks that we're discussing spreadsheets a net worth calculator basically all the tools that you need to truly take advantage of this episode and the following six there's more than that though ben that they need for this episode coming up absolutely there's we, we'd advise that you, you take some time to print out your bank statements, to print out your credit card statements, your retirement statements. Just do a little bit of homework, get some of those resources with you, grab a pen and a couple of highlighters, listen to this episode, and then later on sit down with all those items, listen to it again, and do the homework. The homework will set you up for all the rest of the content that we're going to deliver during the wealth series. And if you don't do it, you're truly cheating yourself. And we want to remind them they can always go to Facebook, jump in there and join us in our Facebook group. Win, make, give, if they have questions as they're going through it. So Ben, let's jump to it and let's start talking about a reality check. A reality check chat is, is our ability to know where we're at at any given time. Like if you were thinking about your health and you're, you're, you're a healthy dude, like you might weigh yourself to see where you're at. Right. You might time yourself on, on a run, right? Or you might see how much weight you could lift or challenge it. Like there's some metric, right? Yep. We forget to apply these metrics to our financial life. We need to measure our expenses, our income, our liability, debts, our, our investments on a regular basis, just like you would your weight. Okay. So you've got this thing you call the net worth tracker. And it's something that you have those that work closely with you fill out regularly. And it's available to anybody. They can go to the winmakegive.com website and they can get the tracker so that they can follow along. They can then listen to this episode again and again, and they can work on this. Why don't you take us through this tracker, Ben? Let's talk a little bit about it. What are the pieces of the net worth tracker? Yeah, they, they can get the the, our tools and our resources for free, right? We aren't trying to charge them anything. You just go to winmakegive.com and, and get it for free. But, you know, Chad, the net worth tracker is how we weigh ourselves on a monthly basis financially. We understand that in order to increase our net worth, we have to spend less than we earn. Now, that's not a rocket science statement, but we don't live it we don't think about it. If we want to increase our financial standing over time, we literally have to figure out a way to spend less than we earn. With any excess that's left over, we have to use that to pay off our debt, our liabilities, Chad, and then reinvest the rest so that it can grow over time. We can stop with that process when those investments that we've made create the annual income that you would need to continue your desired lifestyle. So you would sit back and ask yourself the question, Chad, hey, if I was sitting back with my honey money and we were thinking, hey, we could no longer work anymore, how much income would we have to come in on an annual basis in perpetuity, right, to, to live our lifestyle and to continue on and to take care of things like, like emergencies? Sure. The goal of the net worth tracker is to get you on track for you being into a position so that your investments, your retirement, right? Your other sources of income completely cover your lifestyle. Yeah, life expectancy keeps changing. We have no idea how long we're gonna live for. So you're giving us a method here to make sure that we can finance however long that is. Making sure that we've got that plan. So Ben, what's the first thing that goes on a net worth tracker? I mean, all the things I own, right? Well, let's follow along in, in, our, in our worksheet because we want people to actually go download this 
And if you've ever listened to a podcast that gave you homework, this is one of those. Like we, we are now your new financial professor. You don't Great. have to pay us. You don't have college debt on this. But now you got to jump in. You got to download this stuff, and you got to actually do it. Okay. If you're not going to do it, hit stop right now. Go back <laughs> to Joe Rogan. Right. Go listen to something something else. Yeah. Right. This is just entertaining. But if you want to change your financial life, let's dive in to the very first step. Okay. Which wh- is which is expenses. Well, wait a minute. I don't get to write down all the, the good stuff that I have first. Why do I have to start with my expenses? Because I picked it. Oh, all right. Randomly. Well, you got the systems that work, so we're going to follow your system. So let's talk about expenses, Ben. Give us, a, give us an overview on the topic of expenses and what we're going to be tracking. I know the worksheet has categories here for us. Walk us through some of these and some of the things we have to think about. Yeah, the step one is to understand how much money you need every single month to live on. And I put those into two categories. One is required monthly expenses. These are things that you cannot live without. Chad, that would be like your mortgage or or your rent. Yep. Your your water, your power, your your garbage bill. The utilities. Yeah, your your internet, right? Most of us would go without TV before we would our our internet. That is true. Right. But it could be your cable. Any, any, uh, payments that you have to make to credit cards, your car payment. Well, hang on a sec there, Ben. Let me interrupt and ask a question. You just said any payments you have to make to credit cards. What are your feelings on credit cards? If we're wanting to get ourselves into a financial growth position, if we want to learn how to handle money better, what is your take on credit cards? Well, we could go off in a big tangent on this, Chad. It, it's important that we understand today where we're at, that we don't give judgment on where anybody is mm-hmm. or if we have credit cards or if we don't. Credit cards are just debt. Debt is just leverage. Sometimes that leverage is done for luxury and sometimes that leverage is done to move yourself forward. Sometimes that debt is used just to survive. And we're in interesting times and everybody is in a different position on why they might have debt or why they, why they might have credit cards. So, so no judgment here. Nope. We'll talk about that in the future on, on how to reduce it. But we have to understand today where you're standing today. How much money do you have to pay this month for your minimum payment? Sure. Next, car insurance. Yep. Oil, gas. Like, What are you paying on a monthly basis, Chad? Groceries, insurance, medicine, essentials, dog food, right? That's an essential. It is. Absolutely. If you have a dog or a cat out there or any sort of pet, you know that is an essential. It is in my world, right? That's right. Yeah. Those those are things like our required monthly expenses. Okay. I encourage you to not just make a list of your expenses, but to but to put them in either this category, required or the next category, which I call optional. And before you get into those, Ben, it would be really easy. Someone can sit down and probably figure out what most of these are. Yet we would advise everybody who wants to really get a grasp on this to actually watch their bills that are coming in every month because there's probably something they're forgetting. There's probably one bill they're paying that they're forgetting. So make sure you're watching required monthly expenses. And then you also give us, Ben, optional monthly expenses. What are you covering in the optional monthly expenses categories? Well, optional monthly expenses would be things like entertainment, going to the movies, having fun, dinners or lunches when you could have made it at home, but instead you, you go out quite often and you eat out. Hobbies, vacation, travel, subscriptions, clothing, big purchases, the amount of money that you're giving to charity, amount of money you're putting into your savings or your 401k, education, books, like there's a long list of things that we could probably go without if there was ever an emergency. I want us to establish the difference between minimum amount that it costs us to live and all the other amounts that we actually spend every month. And it's really important. Now you talked about sitting back and looking at each one of these bills. We'll take it a step farther. What I'd ask you to do is take a copy of all your credit card statements, print them out. Take a copy of all your bank statements, print them out, line item details, sit down with a highlighter and highlight the ones in 
that are required that you can't change at all in green. Okay. And put the optional ones in yellow. Okay. And then take the ones that you know was just a stupid waste of money, a mistake, right? Whatever. And put that in red. Okay. Things you're going to stop, you're going to get rid of, or you're not going to have to happen again. So some subscription I signed up for that I don't even use anymore and I forgot I even had, yet it's still running through my credit card. Like the hair club for men. Right. I do not need that one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like my Peloton subscription. There you right? go. You it do needs, not need that. It needs to go in, in, in red. In red. So once you're done with that, Chad, and you've made a list of all these things and you've put them in the spreadsheet, it'll add it up for you. But if you're going to do it on your own, just add it up. Figure out... What is your total monthly expenses that are required for you to live? That's the minimum amount of income that you have to make every single month, okay. no matter what job or what you're doing, right? Multiply that by 12. That's going to give your annual expenses. Got it. Now do the same thing with your optional. Think about how much money are you spending on things that you could actually go without? How much of your, of your total annual income, when you added that all up and you saw your monthly optional expenses, you multiplied it by 12 and you got your total annual optional expenses, add that up and just think about what percentage of your income are you spending on things that you, you potentially could go without if you wanted to. Way too much. Yeah, yeah, most likely. Yeah. Now the last step is you gotta add them both together and come up with your annual expenses. Okay, so now I know whether they're optional or required. Now I know at least how much I need to make this year to have the lifestyle I've chosen to have, which is adding those optional pieces on top of the mandatory. Yeah, you add it all together and you know exactly what it takes you or your family to live. Okay. If you do not do this, ep the, this exercise, then in our additional episodes where we talk about things like save like crazy and expense management, they're gonna be useless because you didn't take the time to do this so that you can refer back to this and make changes. Okay, so we're building a foundation here and saying, you do episode one of this series first before you start listening to, oh, I get to invest wisely, that would be awesome. Sure it would be. Yet if you're not doing this, you're not having the income to do that. Exactly, John. Okay, so part one of that was our expenses. What's part two of this reality check that we're taking ourselves through to figure out our net worth? The next thing that we really wanna figure out is, our <clears throat> liabilities, which, which another word for that chat is our debt. Okay. This is where we're going to dive in and see what kind of debt do we have? What I consider debt would be credit cards. Okay. Auto loans, yep. student loans, mm -hmm. lines of credit, real estate debt, maybe money that you owe your families or in-laws or neighbors or Hey, if you're listening to this and you owe me money, put, put me down, put my, <laughs> put my name down. Right. Maybe it's the IRS. Sure. Right. You, you make a list of it. Then in one column, you're going to put how much total do I owe those people? That would be like, I owe 300,000 on my house and I owe 10,000 on my car and I owe 5,000 to the IRS and I owe 3,000 in credit cards. That, that's your total liability. Okay. And the other column, you're going to write down what's your minimum monthly payment. My minimum monthly, not yeah. what I've been wanting to pay, what that minimum truly is though. Yeah. Okay. What's your minimum monthly payment? Get the, all that figured out. Mm -hmm. In order to pay your debt on a monthly basis, what's your minimum monthly payment? Okay. Add that up. And that'll give you an idea of what percentage of your income is going to decisions that you made in the past. Mm. Okay. And that's it. a powerful thought right there, right? Sure is. We, we can't get ahead in the future because I'm dealing with all my bad life decisions of the past. And many of us have made them. And then like you said, they're not even bad decisions sometimes. Sometimes it's leverage. Sometimes, hey, a student loan isn't a bad decision. An auto loan isn't necessarily a bad decision if we needed a new car or we wanted to get the education. We just still have to realize that that's debt we have we have to take care of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Ben, do you have an order? I know you have them in an order on the page here, yet I also know how your brain works and these are probably just the order they started to come to you. If I were gonna pay one of these off first, do I just look for the one that's got the highest interest rate? Do I look for the one that's got the lowest balance to get it off my books? What would be your suggestion as I work towards getting out of debt? 
you know, mathematically, it's always a smart idea to pay off the highest interest items first. Sure. Because that's where you're wasting the most amount of money. Okay. That's always kind of our advice, Chad, and to strategize how to how to do that takes you taking the time and filling out a net worth tracker like this. And if you wanted to dive into that, an easy way to do would be to add an extra column and just write what your interest rate is mm, Okay. and write what your term is. How long do you have to pay it off? Like cars are on five years or seven years, right? Right. And how long do you have left on it? And uh, real estate might be on 30 years, sure. right? Your credit card, you, you may have to pay it off every month if it's an American Express or it could be, you know, you got to pay it off by, you know, whenever. So do that. that. That'll help you. Once you're done with your your debt tracker, I call this my debt tracker, okay. Chad, and I track it on a monthly basis in a spreadsheet because I want to know, is my total debt going up or is my total debt going down? Sure. That would be a great indicator to keep an eye on. Yeah. Not just my monthly expense, but is the overall principal going up or going down? Because that affects your net worth. If you If you paid off your debt, $3,000 this month, right? You just increased your net worth by $3,000 sure. so long as you didn't go add that debt somewhere else. A lot of people think like, hey, uh, I'm not paying my debt off. Well, when you make a payment to your credit card, you are. It might only be $37, but a portion of that is going to your principal. Right. Your car payment, there's a portion of that every month that goes to the principal amount due on your car. And in your real estate, the same thing, right? You might be surprised that every month you increase your your net worth by eight hundred dollars because you're paying your mortgage payment. Right. And this is important for us to start tracking. Okay, so we now have step one and step two: our expenses. We have our debt. Let's go to step three because I think it's going to be a little more fun. We don't always want to look at our our debts. We don't always want to look at our expenses. We want a little fun that comes with this as well. So, what's step three, Ben? Well. Fun is determined by what you have. Some people have no debt and filling that out was super fun. That could be a great point, <laughs> right? excellent point. <laughs> the next section is income. And, and if you have income, it's super fun to fill yes, out. Yes, it is. If you have no income, this is a very depressing part of the process. All right, well said. So the income sheet, Chad, is for us to add up all the different sources of income that we have. Number one, what is our uh, uh, annual salary? or our hourly rate, or what we get paid monthly for our job, or what we get paid from our business, this is where I consider it exchanging time for money. Right. Whatever our primary job is, what are we doing, and how much does that give me? I would write that down in gross and net. So if you make 50,000 a year, but after taxes and all that other kind of stuff, you actually have 40, you need to know both of those numbers. Okay. Because you can't spend your gross you could only spend your net. Right. Right. Okay. Now other income, another source of income, Chad could be, uh, you work a second job, you drive Uber. Okay. Right. Or you are a photographer and you sell some pictures okay. or you do some piece work after hours, you multi-level marketing. Yeah, you could be a part of a there's a, a lot of those out there. A, another do it yourself biz or do it from home home business. That's that's a great example. Okay. Uh, additionally, another source of income is profits from your business above and beyond what you pay yourself. So okay. you might pay yourself a salary of a hundred thousand, but after you paid yourself and you paid all your employees and you paid all your expenses, there was still another thirty thousand dollars left in your account at the end of the year. That's your business income. And for most of us, we have to take that as income in our taxes. So that would be another source. Okay. And you could take a profit distribution from your business every month from a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand if you own your own business. Next would be rents. So let's say you, instead of selling your last house, you just rented it out and you moved into a new one. Yep. Hopefully the previous renter pays you a little bit more than what your mortgage is. That excess becomes additional income for you. Okay. Investments or dividends, let's say that you, you have some money in a stock account and it pays dividends every year, or you're taking some money every month or every year out of your retirement account to live on, depending on where you're at in your career. Yep. Or maybe you've made some investments where you own part of some other things or some other businesses, and it pays you a little bit of money or a lot of money every single month. Okay. And then lastly would be loans 
that you made to people where they pay you interest. So this and, is the people who actually choose to pay you back. Yeah, right. yeah, very small percentage. Right. <laughs> very small percentage. <laughs> this is not your in-laws, Chad. Got right? it. In-laws don't pay you back. Got it. Okay, now, and as you say, some of us might not have too many things on this page. We might just have that salary or that income that we're making from our job. Yet over this series and over these episodes of the podcast, we are again and again and again going to be showing ways to be adding other streams of income to your world. Yeah, one of the next next uh, episodes we do will be increasing your income and strategies to do that. But you don't know how much you need to increase your income if you haven't figured out your expenses, you haven't figured out your debt, and you don't know where you actually stand today. And you might do this on a household perspective where you add up, well, what does my spouse or partner make? What do I actually make? Do we have any other sources of income, right? You add it all up at the bottom of the spreadsheet. This is your total income that you have available to pay for your life, make your investments, plan for retirement. Okay. So well, we've, we've got our expenses, we've got our debt, we've got our income, and now that's going to lead us to our net worth. Not yet. No? Okay. Because so we still have to add up some other things that increase our net worth, Chad. Okay. Our Such income as. is part of it. Yep. Our expenses are part of it. It's going to help us figure out where are we actually at financially. But your net worth is the difference between the value of your assets minus your total liabilities. If there's anything left over, that is your positive net worth. Okay, now we don't, we don't like to do math. None of us like to do math. Yeah, give me that equation again. You just gave me a math equation to figure out my net worth. If you added up all your assets mm -hmm. and you subtracted all your debt, okay. what's left over is your net worth. Okay. And I'll dive into what I mean by assets and liabilities and so on. But now we're working our way deeper into this net worth tracker spreadsheet that we're giving you. And this reality check will help you figure out how are you going to make improvements to this? When I started doing this, Chad, and I finished my very first net worth tracker in uh, the end of 2008, my net worth tracker said negative 500 and something thousand. Right. 2008 probably wasn't a great year to do your first one, Ben. It was actually awesome because it was negative 500 and something thousand because real estate had gone down. Yep. I had debt. I had to use credit cards. When the chaos happened, I made bad decisions. I spent money too, too, too fast. And I didn't even know where I was at. But the first time I filled out the net worth tracker, I got to look down and say, all right, at least I know where I'm at. Now I have something to work on. You had the reality check that you needed. Yeah. And then every month as we continued to check it, one month it went to four ninety nine, four hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars in negative net worth. Hey, right, that's growth. It was better than five hundred thousand. Sure. And every month it got smaller and smaller and smaller. As I made better position uh, decisions, I was able to get positive again. Awesome. At at the downside of that, Chad, I remember walking by a guy on the street. You know, and he had his dollar fifty three in his hat. Yep. And looking down and thinking that guy is worth five hundred thousand. $1.53 more than me today. <laughs> and it, it, it was honestly the truth, sure. right? In, in, in my mindset, right? he was ahead. And that day I was, I was truly behind. So let's, let's jump in to working on our actual net worth tracker. We've gone through the reality check of figuring out what our debt is and what our income is. Yep. And we've started working on our liabilities. The first part of the net worth tracker that you need to fill out is your assets. Okay, run me through these. Your assets are like tangible things that have real value. That would be like cash. I'll go through your sofa and see what you got. Yeah, how much cash do you have in your sofa? Right. How much money do you have in your, in your house? Like hard, tangible cash. Right, currency, real yeah. currency. How much money do you have in your savings accounts? Okay. How much money do you have in your checking accounts? Okay. If you own your business, how much money do you have in your business account? Got it. Do you have any bonds or CDs? Does your life insurance have any cash value? Do you have any 
an annuities, like you, you won the lottery and you got $500 coming to you every month for the rest of your life. Maybe it's a really cool radio contest <laughs> and you got $50 a month for the rest of your life coming in. Like that's an annuity. Yep. What's the value of your investments? Okay. Your, your brokerage account, your mutual funds, any stocks that you, that you have, any real estate that you own, what's the actual value of it? Now you're talking real estate that I don't live in because this is an investment. Well, it's going to be the value of your house, the one you live in, Chad. Okay. And it's going to be the value of all your other properties if you own multiple. Okay. And we're just trying to figure out what are they total worth? Not how much equity do you have in them? Right. This is the total amount. Total. My house is worth 300,000. Write down 300,000. In my stock account today, I have 100,000. Write down 100,000. In my checking account today, I have 10,000. Write down 10,000. In my couch, I got $3.74. Write down $3.74. Right? Okay. You could, you could look at other sort of things like your retirement accounts, 401k, all that kind of pensions, IRAs, all that kind of stuff. Right? You write that down. Yep. And then other assets. Uh, this would be like the value of your automobiles. Okay. The value of your jewelry. So if I own any gold and the diamond ring that my wife has or anything like that. Chad looks like freaking Mr. T. He's walking around here with big <laughs> swing and gold, gold bars yeah, coming down. You know? That's me. <laughs> I ain't getting no plane, Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> Most of you guys are uh, uh, too young to even know Mr. T. Yeah, True. Mr. Sadly. T. Uh, collectibles. Okay. Maybe you got some My art. Star Wars action figures. Your Star Wars I action. still have some original Star Wars action figures. They would probably get listed here then. Our baseball card collection. Yes, absolutely. We've Mom been packing them around out for you know. 20 years and they still aren't worth anything. No, but I finally get to write them on a piece of paper. <laughs> awesome. Uh, anything that you have that might have value that you could sell, you're going to estimate, you're going to put it under the assets tab on the net worth tracker. Okay. Then you're going to add it all up and you're going to figure out what is your total assets. Okay. Step one. Okay. What's the opposite side of that? With a lot of assets, Chad, come liabilities. Yep. A liability would be debt that you owe on like your real estate. Okay. My house is worth 300,000, but I owe 200. Sure. So under the liability worksheet, I want you to go down and write your mortgage and write how much do you owe them? Don't guess. What do you owe them on your last statement as of today? Right. And if you're free and clear, that's a zero. Congratulations to you. Yet if not, just be honest with yourself because we're figuring out what your net worth is. Yeah. And I got some real estate where I get to put zero. Right. And I got some that I have to put a a much bigger number. Right. Yep. Okay. Next, your auto loans. Okay. What do you owe on your cars? My car's worth 10,000 and I, and I owe eight, right? 8,000 down. Okay. Credit card balance, right? You've done this already in part of the debt steps that right. we already talked about. Write down your actual credit card balance. Okay. Total of all of them. Student loans, back taxes, lines of credit, investments, debt, like you, you, you had some margin in your, in your, in your stock account, you borrowed money to buy stocks, right? Okay. Any sort of business debt, you're going to write down all those liabilities, money that you owe your family. Maybe your, your parents gave you some money to, for your down payment on your house, right? You're going to write that down. Okay. Then you're going to add it all up. That's going to give you your total liabilities. Okay. As of this date. Yes. Right. As of this date. And I, and I do this about the middle of the month once all my credit card statements came out and once all my, my new home statements came out and I was able to really look at where am I at for this month, you're going to total those all up and you're going to end up with a, with your liabilities and your assets. Yep. You're going to subtract liabilities from your assets. Okay. That is going to give you your net worth. Okay. As of today, as of today, Today. How often are you doing this? Is Every this month. monthly? Every okay. month. It's a habit. Got it. And if you're, if you're married or you got a spouse or a partner or somebody that you share finances with, or, or you have an accountability friend that you want to keep studying money with, you might get together right on Sundays once a month and make it your wealth night. And you sit down and you actually go through 
and you do it. The first time you do it, it sucks. <laughs> it does because you're not as far as you, as you thought you would be, right? You have way more debt than you thought, right? You, but you're starting to get an understanding of where you're actually at today. Okay. But next month, it's going to change. If you make better decisions for the next 30 days, you're going to have a little bit less debt. Your real estate could have gone up a little bit. Your stock account could have gone up a little bit, right? You paid some things off. Maybe your checking account grew just a little bit more, right? You're going to start seeing that there's a positive and a negative change. If you're in an economy where there's been massive disruption, yep, like a plague or a virus or a financial <laughs> crisis, yes, something that like that, happened. you still track it. You're going to see how those things affect your net worth over time. And you're going to go back in a year or two and you're going to say, remember the blip of 2020 where I lost 30% of my net worth in, sure. in one month. And that might get you to sit back and say, gosh, I had too many of my eggs in one basket. Mm. Back then I had all my money in the stock account or all my money in a couple different stocks, right? All my money in one particular thing. And it all went away. Right. This will help you to understand the impacts of our decisions. When you're done, you, you've effectively done what I call our reality check. You know your income and you know your expenses, which means you know how much it's going to cost you to live. Yep. You know how much total debt you have to pay off. You've accurately calculated your assets and accurately calculated your liabilities, and you know your net worth for this month. Net worth changes on a regular basis. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to become a student of wealth. Students of wealth, which we'll talk about in a later episode. Yes, we will. They track their numbers. Okay. They weigh themselves financially on a regular basis. And I'm going to ask you to do it once a month. Okay. Now, I heard somebody say once, Chad, the lack of accounting means the lack of accountability. Yes. If you are not tracking where you are financially, you're not being financially accountable and you're putting your family, your dreams, your goals, and all these things at risk. So let's, let's think about what we did today. And as you do this exercise tonight or tomorrow or this weekend, I want you to take some time and I want you to journal. I want you to write down, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this exercise? I want you to write down, what are you surprised by? And I want you to write down, what do you need to focus on? What was your aha from this exercise? I don't want to aha from our podcast. I want to aha from them actually going out there and doing these things, Chad. Okay. So let me give them those things one more time. We want them to journal about how do they feel about this as they do the exercise. We want them to figure out what they are surprised by and what do they need to focus on over the next 30, 60, 90, the next year, whatever it's going to be immediately. We want them to track these things because we know there's an aha in there, not in the episode, not in the things you've shared. We know they're going to find an aha just asking themselves and journaling the answers to those three questions. And we want them to make a commitment with their spouse or their partner to somebody they're financially tied to, or at least to themselves, that they're going to commit to tracking their net worth on a regular basis. That they're going to go to winmakegive.com, click resources, download this spreadsheet, and start using it and filling it out on a regular basis, every single month. Okay, now if they're going to get a partner, an accountability partner, a spouse, a coach, someone that's going to hold them to it, you should probably think about sharing this episode with them as well so they have the same understandings and can have the same conversation with you. Hey, Bob Stewart, you're kind of quiet. What do you think, buddy? Well, I, okay. Uh, in full disclosure, I've been over here, like following along with the worksheets and, and like, I've, I've been writing some of these numbers down and I've got a bunch of holes to fill when, when I get home tonight, but wow. Like, um, I, my mind's spinning a little bit, right? I, I think, I've always been somebody who's ultra competitive. And so the idea of like, you know, a, a race and how fast I'm going on that thing or how many free throws could I make in a row or, or just this idea of keeping track of a lot of the things that we kind of are competitive in. But most of us don't month after month, keep track of our, of our net worth. So for me, this is just like the ultimate reality check. 
Yeah, some of us are probably sitting back. Those that actually do the homework and, and dive into this are thinking, it's not as bad as I thought it was. And some of them are thinking, gosh, it, all those things have really added up, right? No wonder I, I can't get ahead or, or no wonder things are going good. There's people are going to be having lots of emotions after doing this exercise today. Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely got them running through me just listening to you guys. Now, Ben, we've got homework questions that we're asking to have people to fill out to be eligible for the money that you're giving away at the end of this whole thing. Got a hint? Money, money, money. <laughs> money, mo Sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to make a rap. <laughs> Those of you that are interested in taking part in the five $1,000 prizes or the one $5,000 prize, the six different winners of the Win Make Give Wealth Series, remember, you got to answer a question from each episode. And I hate to be so obvious, but I'm going to give you a hint. Because in order to increase our net worth, Bob Stewart, we must spend less than we earn. With any excess left over, we must pay off liabilities and reinvest the rest. We can stop when those investments create the annual income needed for our desired lifestyle. Because the goal, Bob Stewart, is to work when we want, on what we want, for who we want, or at some point, just not work at all. Yeah, sign me up. Absolutely. As you get through the, the Win Make Give Well series, you've just finished episode two. We have six more coming to you for resources, workbooks, or to take part in our contest, please visit winmakegive.com and sign up for the Wealth Series. And we'll see you on the next one, Chad. How do we end? As always, Ben, we want them to remember to wash those hands and remember to do good. All righty. Wash those hands and do good. So, what did you hear? What did you hear from my friend Ben? Must be accountable. <clears throat> yeah, accountability, accountability around um, your finances, accountability around money uh, is something a lot of people don't like. Uh, and, and I will tell you that, that if you're not great at holding yourself accountable, get someone else to help you get someone else that you, that you, you know, if you're going to commit to, to, uh, looking at your net worth, updating your net worth, um, balance sheet, your personal balance sheet every month, have someone that, that you can trust to make sure that you can check that box with, right? I, I, I like having somebody I can kind of exchange those, those documents with and say, okay, well, here's where I am for the month. Where are you for the month? How can we help each other be, be bigger and better next month? <clears throat> that accountability is really, really important, right? And it's just, as Ben says, it's, it's just a, a matter of accounting, right? Accountability is not punishment. It's not finger wagging. It's to make sure that you stay on track with the accounting. And when you're talking about your finances, accounting is hugely important. What else? What else did you hear? Um, that your net worth changes on a regular basis. Oh yeah, it does. It does indeed. I'm going to tell you, I love, that one. <laughs> I love that one. Right. And I love it because prior to my net, prior to paying attention to net worth more than anything else, uh, mortgage payments were painful to me. And now I look forward to that mortgage payment because every time I make a mortgage payment, my net worth goes up. And so I don't look at it as an expense anymore. You know, clearly it's still an expense for me to live, but I don't look at it that way. I have a different mindset around making mortgage payments. All, I, I, when I, I go to the bank and hand the, hand the check over and think, oh, baby, I know exactly how much my net worth just went up. I'll see you next month. Can't wait. It's a much healthier relationship with, with, your, with your mortgage banker than, than the other. <clears throat> so I do encourage it, right? It does change. And, and here's my question. Um, how would you know? Like, do you know if your net worth changed from la la last month to this month and by how much? 
so that that was what I was going to say uh, was my takeaway. Um, in, a, in another time and place, I, I remember hearing the mantra, attract number grows mm -hmm. or, or makes progress. Because again, I've done it with weight loss, right? So I don't want that to grow. But this, that's, how we, that's how we'll know. You have to track it. You have to track it consistently. Um, even if you know what you're doing, what the steps are, the actual tracking of it somehow <laughs> causes it to go in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it, it, it's, it's it, to phase point, like what you focus on expands, right? Because go right back to that bold law. <clears throat> and, and with weight loss, the thing that you're looking to see more of, what's going to grow is your thinness, right? Right, so it, right. There's always a way to look at that and say, okay, what I focus on will expand, even though we may not want to physically expand, but my, 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 uh, my self-confidence around how I look might expand. My, uh, my, my thinness might expand. My, my results, my results. My results might expand. Mm -hmm. All those things, 100%, mm -hmm. right? Thanks, Rick. <clears throat> what else? I will encourage you, go ahead, Kim. We're not good at reading lips and you're unmuted. I'm not sure what the story is. All right, if it's fast, type it in the, in the chat box. If not, call me on my cell phone and, I, and I'll put you on speaker. Um, Nope, that wasn't Kim. Nope. Sorry. Yeah, call me. You realize this better be really good now. <laughs> We're experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. There she is. Hi, this is so not exciting. I'm just trying to share that these cheeks always feel very daunting to me, but I think I like the way that Kenny delivers it better than the previous. Because I feel like it feels more concise and um, more doable. And I love how the chart looks from month to month where you can see the comparable next to each other. I'm assuming we can download that from his website. Yeah, if you just go to winmakegive.com. So did everyone hear what Kim said? Was it loud enough? Okay, so what she said was um, that the, the look of all these forms, like the first time you do it, it seems kind of daunting, right? And the, the idea of, uh, the idea of, of putting all, getting all, gathering all this information and putting it together once, here's what I'll tell you. Do it one time because a lot of it doesn't change as often as, as, uh, as you think, right? Yeah, things fluctuate a little bit, but the, I mean, like on my balance sheet, I have, I have the market centers. I have, I have companies that, that need to be valued, right? And then I take my, my percentages of the equity ownership of the company. I don't do that every single month. I do that like twice a year to make sure I'm still tracking close enough with what that looks like. Right, the the cash positions and, and mortgages, I do I do input that monthly, but that's easy because you just go online and look at a number, or you get a statement and you and you, you input that number, right? And so, um, so do it one time, and you'll you'll be amazed at how much kind of stays the same. the The other thing that I would encourage you to do is figure out once you've once you've written it out once on Ben's sheets, and as Kim was also saying, you can get these sheets at Win Make Give. Dot com. That's winmakegive.com. Click on Wealth Series and you can, you can download the, um, the workbooks that we send out to you. Or just go to, um, uh, there's also some Excel spreadsheets, I think, that you can download from, from there as well. What I did is I, I finally, I, I got acquainted enough with the personal balance sheet that I just created my own Excel spreadsheet. So, so it, it makes sense to me. I have all the assets on one side, all the liabilities on, on the other side. I have my mortgage um, amounts in there that, um, that, that change each month. I have my, my, my um, interest rate. So if I was looking to refinance or I was looking to pay off 
One, I knew which one made sense to pay off. Um, I then have it calculate the percentage of my real estate that I actually own, right? Versus not own. Because as, as you pay down mortgage, the percent that you actually own goes up, right? So I want to know, what do I own? Do I own 20% of my, of my properties? Right now, I own, uh, of all the properties I own, I own 54% of all the, the properties. So, so, when I, so then I use that calculation when it tallies up the, the total number, the total value of, of my holdings, I then have the spreadsheet take the, the value of the holdings multiplied by the percentage that I actually own to give me my actual equity in those properties, right? And so when you do it on an Excel spreadsheet, I have the, the assets and the liabilities and the net worth information at the bottom. Then I have all these side little side calculations going on. So I can always kind of check it out and see what the story is, right? It's kind of what makes it fun. At least if you're kind of geeky and nerdy, then, then that, that's, you know, that's my Saturday night. So woohoo, baby. What else? Was anybody else struck by the, um, struck by the, the exercise about expenses? And here's what I mean by that. When you do the exercise about expenses, there's two columns. There's required and optional. And I want you to be really honest with yourselves about required versus optional. To, to the extent that what I would do if I were you is, so if Adonis and I were kind of just, just like, you know, doing this exercise together, I would write down my required expenses and my optional expenses, and then I would give it to him and say, okay, ask me questions about this. I want you to look at it and then, and then, looking at, and then look at what that looks like. I want him to quiz me. Like, okay, so you, are you sure that like eating out four times a week is, is required? Like, shouldn't that be in the optional category, right? Is Sirius XM radio required or is it optional? Because you have a certain, the, the reason you pay for them right now is because you have a certain emotional attachment to some of those things. And so when I give my sheet to Adonis and he asks me questions and he gives me his and, and I ask him questions back, now we're, 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 we're coaching each other through an exercise that ultimately gets us to a better place of really understanding what's optional. Does that make sense? Right, it's just somebody calling you out a little bit, right? Because some of that stuff we hold on to, you, you, you hug it, you, you pet it, you give it little kisses because you don't want to see it go. And here's what's fun. What's fun is, when you, when you make the decision to let some of that stuff go and then you take those funds and save them and start to purchase assets, whatever that looks like for you, remember flipping the triangle, right? So when you start to utilize your, your income in different ways and you purposefully sacrifice something that, that means something to you and you start utilizing those funds to buy assets, those assets mean more to you. Because it wasn't just extra money. You didn't find $50,000 on the sidewalk, right? You worked. You worked hard. You saved. You cut out some of those things that you, that you enjoyed. And you made a purposeful effort to get that amount of money over here to go and buy a property or to go and invest in the stock market or go and buy whatever your asset is going to be. Make sense? So I would get really clear about, about the optional. Spend a little time on that. The, the other thing that I find is, and, and I, want, I want to just kind of um, caution you on this. The other thing I find is that some people steer clear of the debt tracker because it, it makes them feel bad to really list all the debts. I would, I would encourage you that numbers are, they're not, they're not emotional. Don't, don't, attach, don't attach subjective meaning to the numbers. They're just numbers, right? They're just numbers. It's, it's like what you weigh. What you weigh is just what you weigh. You, the, only, the only reason that, that that pushes you to do something is, is you'll have an emotional a reaction around what that number is. 
Instead, have an emotional reaction around how you feel, right? Your health, your, if, 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 have an emotional feeling of, around, around vanity. If you want to look a certain way, right? Don't have an emotional feeling about the number because numbers are just numbers. And, and that's, that's why I think that it's so much, uh, there's so much growth for everyone uh, on the planet to have around discussions about money, right? Because they're, they're just numbers. They don't define a person. They don't make someone better or worse. They, they're just, it's just a number, right? So, so be really objective about those numbers. Make sure that you look at it square on, right? Stare it down. If it's debt, you have to tell that debt, I'm not afraid of you, baby, because I have a plan to get rid of you. And then of course, the, uh, we're gonna come back to this in, the, in, a, in a session or two. I think the next session is uh, planning for retirement. Uh, as I told you, this, that one was, a, was an eye opener for me. So, um, so I do hope you come back. That's one o'clock on Friday, right? We're not three o'clock on Friday, we're one o'clock on Friday. Uh, so one o'clock Friday, we have um, planning for retirement, but in the save like crazy, or the make more money, or whatever the, I think it's make more money session. Um, he talks about other versions of income, like what else are you doing? And we can have a conversation after that one about, about um, my thoughts about there are some people who are naturally inclined to know how to make money and others who are not. You have to know who you are to, to know exactly what you need to do to look at things differently to see, wow, is this an opportunity for me to make money? Because right? I think some people have a lot of different opportunities in front of them. They don't see them as opportunities for earning or opportunities for income. All righty. Anything else before we, uh, before we finish? All right, guys. So your homework is do these exercises, right? Robert and Maria sent out the, um, the workbook and all the exercises are in there. If you want, uh, if you want additional uh, information, again, go to Win, Make, Give and, um, and uh, we can, uh, you can grab some of those calculators, but in order to do the, the actual work, you don't really need those calculators. You just need the forms. And then gather all your stuff, get it all done. If you can get your net worth calculated, your current net worth calculated by Friday, even better, because then we'll have, a, uh, we'll have another conversation around what that looks like. I'll tell you one last quick story. Some of you have heard it. Uh, I've been working with somebody for a couple of years, and this person came to me and said, um, uh, I, I want to, um, I, I'm, I'm excited about my net worth growth. And this particular individual's net worth growth was kind of what Ben discovered. It was a negative that kind of moved it up to zero. So in a, in a year's time, this individual took a negative net worth and moved it to zero. And they were so excited about zero as a net worth. Again, the, the judgment isn't around what the number is. The judgment is that the excitement was, I moved from a negative number to a zero. Because guess what, you can't, you can't get to positive from negative without going through zero. And so when you, when you then have a, a year later, a net worth of zero, that's just another snapshot, and now you're now you can start moving positively. <clears throat> so whatever it is, don't be afraid of it. Do the exercise so you know where you stand, so we can start creating strategies to move you in a direction of either getting out of the negative or moving from from the zero to the uh, to the positive, or from the positive to the to the more positive. Make sense? All right, guys, have a lovely afternoon. Please remember at 4.30, we will be having a discussion about where to find houses for your buyers. So uh, if at all possible, plug in at 4.30 today. We'll just be 20 or so minutes, maybe 25. Uh, but a lot of good ideas that I've been collecting I wanted to share with you and make sure that you had them. So we'll see you at 4.30. Have a great afternoon.